I, I think the most dramatic part of my story is I was not born into a Christian home, and I share that with you and many, many other people. Uh, but my home was actually, uh, the, the philosophy among, of my parents was quite anti-Christian. It wasn't just, they weren't just atheists. They believed that God was impossible, couldn't exist. Uh, they were Marxists. They were members of the American Communist Party back in the 30s. And I grew up with a very materialist, very anti-spiritual worldview, which admitted to no God, no religion of any kind. Um, and that was my worldview as a child and growing up, uh, even as a young adult. But I was starting to doubt much of that dogma, and it was dogmatic, <laughs> uh, both the militant atheism part and also the communist part. And uh, I began doubting that partially as a result of what I was studying in, in, in college, which was science. I started as a chemistry major, and then I went to graduate school in biochemistry. And But while a chemistry major, I was also learning about quantum physics and uh, things like the Schrodinger equation and the uncertainty principle and various other things about modern physics, which I felt just was not consistent with the materialist worldview. I mean, the whole idea that, you know, an electron isn't really there until you observe it and then it collapses to a wave function. I mean, it, all of that is real and true and it's now part of science and materialist, or I should say naturalist science. But it was certainly revolutionary in terms of the idea of the clockwork universe that you know people used to believe in. Everything is easily reducible to machines and to processes that are uh, reductionist and materialistic. So I kind of got a little shaky about about the whole idea of strict atheism. I began wondering if maybe there really is something else. I didn't know what it might be. I started looking into various religions, including uh, some Indian religions. I, I looked into yoga. Uh, I looked a little bit into Buddhism. I ran away from that because I didn't understand it at all. And uh, and I was looking at a lot of things uh, and not really, I, I kind of, I think this was a phase where I was an agnostic. I, I thought yeah, maybe God exists, but I don't know. I don't see any evidence for it. and. The thing that happened to me was that totally undeserving. I mean, I, I have done nothing. I did nothing in my life to deserve this, but for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit took mercy on me and actually began <laughs> communicating with me while I was still a, a militant atheist uh, in my teens. And I simply ignored these things and the details are in the book. Uh, but eventually I had a couple of dreams that were just so striking that I couldn't ignore them. And I began really thinking about, I mean, they, they featured a figure who really looked like, seemed to me like it was Jesus Christ in the dreams. And I, so I started thinking, well, I, I never believed in Christianity. I'd been told Christianity was a terrible, oppressive, evil religion, all about going to hell and fire and brimstone and guilt and sin, you know, that but I also had met a Christian who uh, invited me to go to a church. Now, I was in my late 40s by this time. I had never set foot in a church in my life, uh, any religious <laughs> you know, establishment of any kind. And I was very nervous. It was a Catholic church. Uh, I was terrified. I thought I would be you know, reviled and cast out and, <laughs> you know held up in shame. Uh, I walked in and uh, I was amazed because all I heard about was love. I mean, that was the that was the theme of the of the sermon. Uh, it was evident in people shaking my hand and wishing me, uh, you know, the peace of Christ. And it was nice, you know, I was, I, nobody yelled at me and I went back a few times. I, I was not a believer, but I, there was something about it that completely dissolved my previous, the previous barriers that I had to even consider Christianity. And at the same time, I 
kind of started looking at the Gospels. And, I, and when I read Matthew, I was really struck. And I have to say that even today, you know, when I hear anything like the Sermon on the Mount, I get very emotional. Um, and I also read the book of Acts, and that was truly a revelation to me, because when I read that, I said, this is history. No, nobody made this up. This is written like history. And I, I, I should mention that even though I'm a scientist, I love history, and I've always been a, a fan of, of reading history, even though I you know, never became a professional historian. But I, at one point, I wanted to. And so... I, I have a feel for history, and the book of Acts was historical. There's no question about it in my mind. They, somebody was, Luke was reporting what happened. You know, maybe there was some exaggeration, maybe a few inconsistencies, but it sounded good to me. And, and so I began thinking about, about Christianity. I started going to church more often. Um, uh, and then uh, I had an experience of the Holy Spirit, I guess, Years had gone by, and God was getting a little impatient with me. I still had not made the commitment. And I had an experience, which is detailed in the book. I will just say now that it involved um, it involved me driving uh, on a highway and listening to a preacher on the radio and thinking to myself, well, I like to talk. Uh, I wonder how it would be if you know I preached, if I gave a sermon, what would I say? And I was thinking about all the things I had discovered about, you know, biochemistry and the, the, the incredible beauty of how life works and things like that. But I pulled over the car, which was a lucky thing, turned out, and I, I started uh, thinking a sermon in my mind. And uh, it didn't come from me. I was a listener as well as the speaker. And... Um, and it was nothing about, it was all about love. And it was all about, just as I had experienced at the church, and it was all about Christ's love for me, which I had never thought about. And it was extremely powerful. When it was over, lasted maybe 10, 10 minutes at the most, maybe less, I started crying and uh, I knew I was a Christian. I knew I was that was it. I was following Christ from then on, and and the rest, you know, just fell into place. But since that moment, I've never had any doubt, and I've often described the immense, indescribable feeling of when I said out loud, sitting in that car on the side of the road, I believe. And this may have happened to you as well. I know it's happened to many people. I felt this amazing joy, light, relief. You know, a burden fell away and uh, and that's it. I mean, it's never changed. So, yeah, uh, that's how I came to faith. <laughs>